told me it was our duty to hold the realm united against a common foe. By naming me heir, you divided the realm. King Viserys Targaryen, the first, sat the Iron Throne of Westeros for 26 years, and during his reign, his house reached the height of his power. His grandfather left him a secure kingdom where the crown did not lack for coin, nor would it for princes and princesses, sired from the union of House Targaryen with the most powerful houses of Westeros, and for the most part, the king's peace was felt across the realm. But above all, not since Valyria of old, had the world seen so many dragon riders. Yet Viserys wouldn't be remembered for the splendor of his court, his amiable nature, open-handedness, eagerness to please, or for continuing the peace and goodwill of his predecessor, all of which he had, was, and did. But by how his steadfastness in keeping his beloved daughter as heir to the throne, despite her birthing not one, but three bastards, the eldest of which would one day rule Westeros, and the mightiest fleet in the Seven Kingdoms, robbing his true-born sons and those of House Valerian of their birthright. So his family torn itself apart and squandered its power, almost completely. And though it's not our place to question a king's choice or a father's love, with the clarity of hindsight and bastard children aside, it's undeniable that Viserys could have avoided war if he had taken the necessary steps to further secure the succession, just like his grandfather did, especially since he had been dying for more than a decade, instead of relying on fealty soared 20 years earlier and before he had male sons, when it's obvious that what he considered a settled matter to his lords was not settled at all. Even choosing Aegon to replace Rhaenyra as heir would have been a better choice if he wanted to protect his bastard grandchildren, because nobody would care if they were bastards if not for the seats they will occupy, not to mention avoiding plunging the realm into war. It is saddening that the legacy of Viserys, a king of peace, would be so much bloodshed and destruction, but placing the blame entirely on him is unfair. Succession for the throne was a muddy subject from the time of the Conqueror, made even worse by their history of incestuous marriage, and would continue to be muddy, even after the dance is done. Aegon the Conqueror forged his throne with fire and blood, then his younger sister-wife Rhaenys gave him his firstborn son and heir, Aenys. Maegor followed, but from his older sister-wife, Visenya, who was his elder, when Aegon died, Aenys became king, and when he had children of his own, it wasn't his daughter, his firstborn child, who he considered his heir, but her younger brother, Aegon. But since he planned to marry them, it didn't matter. But when Aenys died, Maegor took the throne by the same right as his father, by force. And however cruel and hated, in the annals of Westeros history, the usurper was the third Targaryen king to seat the throne. During his reign, he killed his two eldest nephews, Aegon and Viserys, the former of which had already had two daughters with his sister wife Reyna, who Maegor also took as one of his six wives, making her a queen. In time, Maegor, still without issue of his own, named Reyna's oldest daughter as heir, disinheriting his nephew Aeharis, Aenys' oldest living son, and Queen Reyna's younger brother, at least if Aenys' line and primogeniture was considered. Then, during the waning years of Maegor's reign, when he was becoming more isolated and his power dwindling, there were talks of lords supporting the ascension of Queen Reyna's eldest daughter, or the queen herself as ruler, being the eldest living child of King Aenys. But when Maegor died, it was Yaharis who had the most support behind him. And during his reign, even though their relationship was amicably, in more than one occasion his sister Reyna told him and his queen Alisanne, sister of both, that they got her crown and her throne. She was also referred to as the Queen in the West during her stay in the Westerlands, and as the Queen in the East during her time on Dragonstone. But Jaehaerys was king now, and would be for the next 55 years, time in which he had 13 children. But initially, he kept his niece as heir, Princess Arya, Reyna's daughter. His firstborn son Aegon, named after his fallen brother and the Conqueror, died after three days 
but his next child, his daughter Daenerys, did replace Arya as heir, but only until the birth of his son, Aemon. Good Queen Alysanne argued that Daenerys was said to be the queen, which Aharys agreed she would, once she married Aemon. Yet the sickness known as the Shivers of 60 AC took Daenerys, but Aemon and his younger brother Balon did reach adulthood and had children of their own. Aemon married Jocelyn Baratheon and they had a daughter named Rhaenys. Balon married his younger sister Alyssa and they had three male sons, Viserys, Daemon and Aegon, the last of which died before his first name day. Tragically, Aemon also died and Jaehaerys named Balon his heir over Aemon's daughter Rhaenys, which angered his queen, and although they would eventually reunite, until her last days the queen always argued that the crown should go to their eldest granddaughter, not their younger son. But Balon would die a prince, and the king, foreseeing a war of succession and understanding its toll, summoned the great council of 101 AC to democratically choose an heir. Many claims were heard, but only two were really considered. The claim of Princess Rhaenys was dismissed early on account of her sex, but she had married Corlys Velaryon, Lord of the Tides, head of the wealthiest house in Westeros, and gave him a son, Laenor. If the lords favored the eldest line of Aemon via Rhaenys, a woman, Laenor would be king, but if they favored the younger male line of Balon, Viserys would rule the Seven Kingdoms. And after his first wife died, and fearing war, should his beloved rogue brother ever ascend the throne, King Viserys named his only child, Rhaenyra, as his heir. But unlike all of the monarchs that came before him, after his sons were born, and despite resistance from his new queen, his hand, his lord, his small folk, tradition, and duty, even her sins, he kept her as heir, and even recognized her children as trueborn, and earned or not, defended her rights, till his last breath. The things we do for love, that too is his legacy. If only it hadn't brought so much misery. Valar Dohairis.